Ride sharing, food deliveries, and even house cleaning services are adding up to one big bill. Schools First Federal Credit Union wants to give us some food for thought when it comes to whether or not you should pay for convenience. Here with more insight is Fruit Bridge, Fruit Ridge Branch Manager Tamara Beaver. Hi, Tamara. Hello, Desiree. Hi. So, Tamara, how common is it for people to pay for convenience? You know, so I get to deal and speak with a lot of members throughout yeah. the day and we sit down and I'm ad, um, advising them and offering solutions on how they can better budget and convenience services are coming up more often mm -hmm. than not. Um, according to finder.com, the survey that you mentioned, three fourths of Americans actually participate in some type of convenience services yeah. and spend $4,000 annually on these services. So they are becoming more and more common. Yeah, I mean, that's more than I could have imagined. So yeah. what are the most popular convenience services? So the most popular is ride sharing. So 50% mm -hmm. of Americans participate in that service and um, spend about $600 annually on that. Second to that is your home services. So that is your lawn care, your house cleaning, those types of things and spend about $1,200 annually on that, which is a lot of money. And then third is your food delivery, which I actually thought would be higher on the list, yeah. but 44% <laughs> of Americans participate in that and spend about $900 annually. So those can really add up, especially if you are participating in more than just one. Yeah, I was gonna say definitely me with the food delivery. It yes. adds <laughs> up with all the fees that come in addition to the it. Tips, so every, yes. it's not just your food, mm -hmm. it's everything it's, else. Yes, exactly. So we know that these services cost more to use than when you do your own cleaning, shopping, or food pickup. Why are people willing to spend more for these services? You know, that's a really great question if we think about it, time, right? Mm -hmm. it, it does have the potential to save you a lot of time. Yeah. In addition to that, there's this perceived savings. Maybe it's gonna save you money in the long run. And while there are definitely certainly people who need to rely on these services for their day-to-day -day life, um, younger people actually participate in them the most. And so the way that breaks down is millennials, about 86% yeah. of millennials use these services. Um, for the Gen X, it's typically 53, or I'm sorry, not 53, 75%. And right. for the baby boomers, it's about 53%. So they're very popular across all, but that millennial number is really high. Yeah, I'm guilty of it as a millennial. Uh, okay. So I gotta <laughs> work on this. Me too, trust me. Yeah, so people could really be saving a lot of money if they went back to the DIY or do-it-yourself yes. model, right? Absolutely. So it is a little bit tricky to answer that question yeah. because it's really going to depend on you and your lifestyle. Like we mentioned, millennials utilize these services the most, but they also have the largest participation in the gig economy. So mm -hmm. they're self-employed. They're relying on multiple jobs to kind of generate their income. So there's definitely a case that can be made that time lost is money for them. So yeah. as they're, you know, spending time to clean their home or do their grocery shopping, they're not investing in that business mm -hmm. that they have. So there's definitely, um, it depends on yeah. you on what, you know, why are you utilizing these services and how kind of, you know, your budgeting looks. Yeah. So, so if someone feels like they've made convenient services too much a part of their daily routine, <laughs> me, uh, <laughs> what do you recommend we do? <laughs> so I would say one of the easiest things you can do is really get into meal planning. And while that sounds so daunting for a lot of us, mm -hmm. being able to buy your food in bulk and prepare your meals kind of ahead of time yeah. will not only save you money, but you'll have some tasty, healthy meals kind of ready on the go. So yeah. it's very helpful. Um, second to that is to remove your credit card information from any of those mm -hmm. online sites, right? We always talk about to protect yourself from fraud too, to not save your credit card information, but it also takes away that convenience. It, it right. makes it a little more work to uh -huh. actually place Another an order. Step. Yeah. Yes. Um, and then really looking at your budget and saying, what are your financial goals? What are you saving for? Are you saving for a car or right. a home or retirement? And are you doing those things? Are you meeting those goals that you have set for yourself? Yeah. And are these conveniences potentially taking away from you kind of investing in yourself and paying yourself first? Right. So. I like that you mentioned the meal planning because that's something I do. And even though it's like uh, a drag on Sunday when mm -hmm. I'm prepping all my meals, for the week though, it's ready to go. So then I don't have to do those last minute charges, those convenience fees that you mentioned. Absolutely. And I think with the pandemic too, a lot of people relied on them a little bit more, mm -hmm. but now we're getting back into the swing of things to where we can kind of do these things on our own. Yes. And if people want to get more information, I understand there's a lot of Schools First locations that they can check out. Yes, so we have 70, um, over 70 locations mm -hmm. kind of throughout California. There's a lot of information on our website, schoolsfirstfcu.org, under the advice tab. We have a lot of budgeting tools and tips and things like that. And then, you know, we have trusted advisors at every location. So right. if you have any questions or just need any kind of help with any of this, definitely come in and sit with us. We love serving our members. All right, Tamara, always a pleasure having you on. Thank you, Desiree. Yeah, of course. And for more info, like she mentioned, visit schoolsfirstfcu.org.